Northland, Southland, um, the Central Plateau and the West Coast, we're seeing much higher levels of um, participation. This suggests to us that um, proximity to and access to um, uh, these facilities and services are key to increasing participation. But it also suggests that there's a lot of competition out there and what I, I'm going to come back to this point about competition um, several times during my, my talk because um, what we're starting to see is that as, a, an, as an agency that is supposed to be providing recreation and outdoor opportunities, we are in strong competition with a lot of other things. And I heard from Sue earlier um, today uh, just about how, how great that competition is. It's pretty difficult to get a feel for the sorts of trends that are going on in outdoor recreation and um, especially with um, young people. But figures from um, uh, Spark a few years ago, this is the uh, 2007 um, survey data, indicate that as an example only 9.4% of the population are actually participating in what we might call traditional backcountry. Um, activities on a you know once a year or um, several times basis. This doesn't equate to many New Zealanders at 300,000 300, odd New Zealanders. Now, what what that means for us is that um, we are um, up against it in terms of um, recruiting new people um, into it, into um, outdoor act activities. So our goal is to increase participation, move from being a supply-driven um, agency to being one that is far more demand-driven. And that is shifting away from having um, uh, just doing building and, um, building and construction and maintaining assets to being one that is um, designing products and providing products that meet um, our local need. The old adage of if we um, build it and they will come um, is worked in the past, it's not working now and we can see that with um, lowering uh, participation rates in, um, in our traditional activities in the backcountry. Um, as I said, there's far more um, competition for people's time these days and both this comes about both through family pressures but also through the um, range of leisure activities that people have got as a choice. If we look at um, the demographic trends that are happening in the population and how this affects what we might be and where we might be investing. In the 1960s, children accounted for a third of the population. In 2006, that was 21% of the population. And by 2061, it's expected that they will be um, only 14% of the population. Couples with children are going to, couples without children are going to be the uh, most numerous of their family types. And so, and we're expecting to see this um, to increase from 39% as it was in the mid 2000s through to about 49% by 2021. That's a significant change in terms of um, ability um, to go out and recreate. Most of this change comes about because of um, the baby boom, boomers. Uh, their children have left home and now what we're seeing is that they're relatively affluent. Mind you, this is going to depend on um, how well the economic um, recession um, resolves itself and um, they're healthier and often they're younger at heart. So what we're expecting to see is um, a growth in this particular area of the market or the, the potentials there to have that growth, but we have to be providing um, uh, facilities and services and products that meet their needs. The Asian segment of, the mar of um, New Zealand's population is um, going to experience the largest growth um, over the next um, 10 or 12 years. And at the moment it's sitting at around about 7% of the population and we can expect by 2021 that it will be at 15% of the population. Most of those people will reside in Auckland or um, the north half of the North Island. The other thing that we're seeing in the, trend, in the population trends is that um, the majority of the population is, sorry, the population is um, centralising and moving north. And so we're seeing, um, the, we will see the majority of the population um, in the North Island, um, based around um, Auckland, it will sit at around about 38% of, um, of the population. 
It's worth noting that um, of the 73 territorial authorities um, in New Zealand, um, most of them will experience a decline in their, in their populations. So all of these things have an effect on um, what um, the, or where the department um, should be investing. So as the baby boomers age, they will want the facility. Um, they will want the facilities that they, or will they want the facilities that they enjoyed when they're younger? All of you are sitting in this room. In fact, I suggest that everybody who's at this conference should probably be asking themselves um, if you want to go and recreate or want to be recreating in the outdoors in the next 10 or 20 years, what sort of facilities would you want to achieve that? Now, recruitment is also a critical issue. If we're not seeing recruitment into um, the traditional activities that we undertake, what sort of facilities should we be providing or what opportunities should we be providing that would encourage people to um, go and recreate in the outdoors? And, so, and again, in Sue's uh, presentation just, um, just earlier today, there was a nice little example of what has been um, noted in, um, in the UK in particular, but also in the US, where um, out the, outdoor um, recreation, outdoor activities promote not just um, health, and, health and well-being, they also inspire um, young people to be leaders and to be good citizens. And it's a really important part, I think, of our society. But what aren't we doing that well? Or where are we being successful, I should say? 61% of families and kids are getting out into um, conservation areas. Um, the household income, um, where it's uh, greater than um, $60,000, we're seeing 62% of those households are engaging in, in, this, um, in these sorts of activities. And um, small towns in particular, are, um, we're seeing um, relatively high participation rates. And that, that suggests to us that in these smaller communities that are, have got um, easier access to um, uh, recreation opportunities that the department manages, we're likely to see high participation rates. So we're doing okay in those areas. Where aren't we doing so okay? So um, participation rates of Pacific Islanders is, is running at around about 94%. Um, the, we see that uh, very low participation rates of um, low income households, and as I mentioned earlier, um, Auckland and um, in the Bay of Plenty um, populations, the participation rates there and the visits to conservation areas are very, very low. I also want to highlight that with the older age groups, we are not doing so well. So those aged 55 and above, their participation rates and the visits to conservation areas um, are decreasing quite markedly. So this is of particular concern because this is the potential growth market for the department. I'd like to uh, just spend a minute talking about youth trends, and it was so encouraging, Sue, to see that um, information coming out now about um, what is actually happening um, today in the, um, in the youth segment. What's important about this is that um, younger people have far more access to a wider range of activities than we had perhaps in, um, in our day. And what what it's, um, what it's showing here is that uh, it's not until we get into the 35 to 49 year age group that tramping, traditional activities that we supply a lot of resource for and a lot of opportunity for, um, start to become in the, the most important activities for uh, that age group. And then you can see um, it's improving um, slightly more for the 50 to 64 year age group. Now, why is that significant? It's significant because we're not necessarily seeing recruitment into um, these traditional activities. And that is potentially um, a threat to the sort of investments that the department um, might be making. So what does this mean for us? At the moment, there is, it's considered that there is um, a, a relatively um, healthy uh, interest in outdoor recreation in New Zealand. Um, but what, what's it going to mean for um, the department uh, in 
five, ten, and twenty years time. And what does it mean for us today as well in terms of what we're going to invest and where we're going to invest? We've we need to move from being the supply-driven agency that we have been up until now to one that is demand-driven, one that's focused on um, meeting the demands of different markets and, and new markets to the ones that we've traditionally um, focused on. Um, we do know that if we can get people out on their first trip into the outdoors, we are more likely to engage them in conservation. So this goes back to our um, one of our key interests in um, promoting the conservation ethic in the New Zealand population. But it will, this, these sorts of changes will require us to think about our business in a totally different way. Do any of you expect to get a different result if we keep on doing the same things that we've always done? Well, I don't. And, of course, if I ask this, if I ask this question of um, a, a range of different agencies I'd, um, or um, interest groups, I'd get, a range of, uh, I'd get a range of answers. There seems to be no consensus um, about how we've, um, how we've invested. If I go and talk to outdoor recreation type groups, um, they would say, oh, the department is mainly investing in the front country. If I go and talk to tourism type groups, they'll say, oh, we're mainly investing in the back country. And if I talk to dock managers, they're going to say, oh, we're making the right investments for recreation. If I asked you now, where do you think the department spends most of its money, what would be your answer? And if you do want to phone a friend, that's fine. Um, I'm asking the audience, or we can go 50-50 and I'll take um, two of these out. <laughs> go for B. You go for B, so 21% in the front country, 79 in the back country. Any other um, ideas? You go for C. So we've got two, we've got a few for B and a few for C. Well, I think you might be moderately surprised. It's around about a 60-40 split. So we're seeing approximately 60% of our investment in the front country and um, 40% in the back country. Now, these are modelled figures at the side here, so this represents a per annum investment, both in capital and operating. And what's interesting is the split that happens north and south. That, for me, starts to tell us something about um, what we've been doing um, as an agency. Now, it's not that we've been doing anything wrong, it's that we've been doing the best things um, that we could with the information that we have. So now let's just put a little bit of um, data around the distribution stuff and some of this population stuff that I've been talking about. The department manages over 4,500 recreation sites and um, the split is, as I said, around about 60-40 in terms of both investment and also the, how, we count, um, how we count the sites. The little red dots on this represent just our front country sites. I haven't tried to um, illustrate all the back country ones as well. What we do know is that um, the, ease and, and, uh, the ease of access and the proximity of that access to um, these population centres um, uh, makes it much easier for people to um, go and recreate and enjoy um, conservation areas. But we need to start thinking, and I'm talking we here, the royal we of um, the Department of Conservation, we need to start thinking a little bit more broadly about how we're going to increase um, participation, especially in the upper North Island. With 50% of the population of New Zealand sitting above that median line, but perhaps uh, less than 20% of the total investment of the department sitting above that median line. And we have actually got a lot of opportunities sitting up there, it's just that it hasn't been um, um, built or invested in yet. Coromandel Peninsula is a good example. Probably more than 30% of the land area there is in conservation um, management, but isn't managed um, uh, necessarily for um, the recreation opportunities that it provides. Anyway, we need to find new and better ways and of making investments that would increase this participation, especially in um, the 
Auckland and Bay of Plenty area, but ob obviously um, up in Northland as well, where the population is growing um, somewhat faster. But if you um, thought and if you wanted to argue that um, tourism or outdoor recreation use doesn't reflect the population, then I'm sorry, it's not quite right. Population centres do actually drive most of our domestic tourism, and most people who take holidays do not go very far from home. I can't remember the exact percentage, but most people take their holidays in the regions in which they live. And so that says something for us about where we should be investing to meet um, the domestic market. So, Mike, can yeah. I take questions? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I should have said that. I'll take questions any time. I can't get over the fact, really, when you sort of... It's really interesting information that we sort of utilise some of it, I guess, be interested. But it does seem to me that maybe the conceptual framework is wrong. Um, Which conceptual framework are we Well, talking you're, you're talking about sort of, you know, where your investment should be in sort of, you know, your median line mm. moving mm. towards the Auckland mm. Bay of Plenty. Mm. Aren't you perhaps starting to compete with um, regional councils or the bigger cities like Auckland? So, and yeah, I was yeah. thinking, why don't you just transfer all those assets in the Auckland region to the Auckland city? Yes. And let them manage the whole lot so you don't actually have to worry about where that sort of investment and maybe you're, the department's moving from, some people might argue, from its sort of roots to actually being almost sort of comp yeah, competing with other traditional providers like the regional councils or cities or the authorities. So that's often, that's often a response that um, I get. And you're absolutely right, Mark. It would be a very appropriate thing for us to do to transfer those resources and perhaps um, even management of the land over to um, Auckland City or to the other territorial authorities where you know, they would be the best um, organisation to um, provide that. It still doesn't move away from the fact that we have in a we have a very, very large investment base out there. The total investment, um, I'm, it, you know, in the back country of, and, and also the front country, but the total investment in terms of assets and uh, opportunities is over a billion dollars. So that's a very large asset base that the government essentially owns and depreciates on your behalf to ensure that um, we've, we've got um, those facilities being provided. Whether it's central government or local government is, the, is almost irrelevant. If we want those sorts of facilities and we want to grow um, participation, then it's really important that we are positioning it in the right place. So it doesn't have to be our resource. I'm pointing out that you know if, if we could do better in the Bay of Plenty, where we have lots of camping opportunities, then we should probably be doing better there. That's, that's really um, what I'm saying. If that's what population wants and that's where the, the best opportunity is and we could get much higher levels of participation then we could do it or we could fund um, local authorities to do it or as I've suggested to um, a couple of different forums perhaps we should just buy a big fleet of buses and we turn up at the schools and we pick up 30 or 60 kids in, in these buses every day and we truck them out to um, where they can have a camping experience and a fishing experience, etc. And we take the burden away from the schools. Let's find the barriers that are getting in the way of people participating in the outdoors. So, Mark, your point's well made, and, it's, and, and we're not ignoring it. It's just that um, what I'm trying to point out to you, but also to um, my colleagues and to others who wish to listen, is that the distribution of the resource has been... Um, undertaken on a more ad hoc type basis. There's a 50 to 100 year history of investment there. And what the department has done is, or what has happened is that we have inherited a lot of asset. And then we've become asset managers rather than opportunity managers. And so we need to, um, we need to think about how we can, um, how we can fix that. Um, interestingly though, when we go and look at the figures that we've been collecting in the national population, um, 
because we find that um, there's a fairly even spread of um, the most popular, the top 10 um, uh, dock managed places. And of the 56% who said that they'd visited the dock area um, in the previous um, 12 months, 11% had visited Tongariro. So it's obviously a special destination for um, a lot of people. But let's not um, forget that's only one part of the market that we're, with, that we're working with. International visitors, um, as we would expect, um, uh, they travel pretty much um, the lines that I've shown there, down the central North Island um, and either down the west coast of the South Island or down through um, uh, uh, central Otago through to um, Queenstown and um, out to uh, Milford Sound. Very predictable and it's and that represents probably most of the icon destinations that the department manages. So we find those icon destinations along, pretty much along the, high, you know, the main highways and we are going to be there for a long time. It's unlikely that others will pick that up. So what does this mean for us? Um, we've, got a, um, we've got a dynamic, um, we've got a, a dynamic network of um, interests that's um, constantly changing, um, but it's very difficult with the, um, I said it was constantly changing, it's actually constantly growing. Uh, and just to give you an idea of the sort of growth that's happened in the assets that we manage, in uh, 2002, we uh, surveyed, completed the survey of all of the uh, track that the department manages, and it came out at around about 12,500 kilometres. Uh, just this year, um, we have um, re, um, re-surveyed and uh, recounted the amount of um, track that we that we manage, and the result is now 14,500 kilometres. So we've seen a 25% increase in the amount of asset. Now most of that asset is actually in the South Island, and it's in the South Island high country, or it's in um, the land, the land tenure um, blocks. That, so we've had this 2,000 um, kilometres of trail added to, um, uh, in less than eight years, added to the, um, uh, the, the amount of trail that we were managing um, prior to that, back in, the, um, back in the 80s and the 90s. So, We've got those sorts of changes occurring and we've got the responsibility and the accountability that um, comes with doing that. This doesn't mean that the sorts of things that I'm talking about are going to be, um, uh, uh, I guess, radical in the shift of resource management and also in the uh, development of new opportunities. It's going to have to be incremental and it's likely to be um, relatively slow. But we do have to start making um, some changes and we have to be rather deliberate about that rather than ad hoc as we have been in the past. And in short, really, we've got to plan it a lot better. So, coming back to Mark's point, are we going to be um, population driven or tourism flows driven or should we just keep doing what we've always done? And um, I'm, I'm not in... Um, any one of those particular camps. What I'm saying is that we have a role to work with um, territorial authorities, to work with um, other suppliers to ensure that we are distributing, as I said, around about a billion dollars worth of investment over the last 50 odd years. We're, we're um, delivering that and um, putting it in the, um, in the right place. And essentially, we should be moving towards a um, demand driven approach. We just can't keep building and supplying things um, in the back country and expect that um, people will turn up. In fact, I'd say that uh, if the department continued to do that, we'd probably be, be considered to be negligent in terms of thinking about um, where we should be investing um, and just letting, um, letting the, uh, the the demand for our facilities bob around and not, not manage it um, in any way. So we need to be focusing on what people want, tailoring our products so, and services so that it meets um, and uh, meets uh, visitors' needs and, can, and we can have an impact on participation rates. So to um, sustain uh, 
tourism, in, uh, sorry, in, uh, out, growth in um, outdoor recreation and uh, docks investments. I think that our investments must reflect the residents' population and the density that's associated with that. The recreation market needs, so therefore we have a, a role to understand the markets a lot better. We need to reflect much better how New Zealanders like to take their holidays. And, um, but we also have to reflect the international tourism flows that we see now and we, and we have um, predicted are likely to occur well into the um, future. So we need to encourage um, people into the outdoors who can encourage others into the outdoors. And this is about growing, um, um, growing participation in um, our younger age groups, but sustaining that through um, people's 20s and 30s. And one of the things I didn't hear today, Sue, and I'm sure I'll, I'll come and talk to you about this, is um, uh, what it was that acted as a barrier to um, uh, kids, uh, young kids and teenagers um, um, sustaining um, those interests that they had um, started at such an early age in, in these activities. And I was surprised at the rapid rate of decline across um, particular activities, especially bushwalking, um, even fishing, you know, I thought that that would have stayed relatively high and, it, and, and those things um, declined. So, I've um, hopefully left us enough time to have a bit more of a chat. You're going to have your own opinions, you're going to have your own questions and the points that you'd like to make, and um, I'd like to open it up for um, a discussion, but if you haven't got any questions of your own, I've got a couple or three for you. We've got a great network, um, but we need to increase utilisation and are we doing it in the right way by just um, continuing to replace what we've currently got? What we're seeing is a decline in our, um, what we would call um, the traditional activities, and is this um, just a sort of uh, an aberrant thing of the time that we've got now, or can we expect to see um, some change? And should we be asking, encouraging the private sector to step up and provide these new opportunities if they're not something that the, uh, the government can do? So here's a few questions for starters, but if you've got your own, then um, I'm happy to, uh, to field any questions. I've got three questions, but, we've, but no, no, no. Oh, that's questions from the pool. All right, most important. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the complexity of it is that I think Doc has responded really well to the growing international market over the last 20 years. However, it's when it comes to addressing issues such as the, the increasing population in the planet and the increasing Pacific mm -hmm. commu the community and yep. also new migrant communities, yes. we've had the luxury, if we're looking at it from a European lens, of growing mm -hmm. up with families that could afford to go tramping, could yes. afford the hut fees. Mm -hmm. Doc has raised cut fees to a point now that even if, say, extended Pacific families wanted to enjoy a great walk, it's almost been costly out of their reach. It has been, I quite agree. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we look stereotypically at what people might desire. Rather than marketing the experiences, looking at making experiences more affordable, close to yes. home, would be potentially a way, I suppose. But also, in terms of really looking at the culture of Department of Conservation, the most of it, Doc, how many Pacifica or new migrant or second generation Pacifica and other migrant um, staff members have you got? I couldn't tell you the exact percentage, but I would probably um, say that it would be um, incredibly low. One percent would be the sort of figure that comes to mind, maybe two percent. It's very low. It's no. sort of understanding that market. And yes, that yeah. Right and so and this is policy and, uh, and this is where we can learn in particular from um, the previous. Auckland Council, Regional Council, they did a very good job in understanding um, the markets and providing products that met those various market needs. And so if you go to um, their parks up there and you find there's open spaces where um, the Pacific um, type groups can meet and get together and play um, their cricket and, and that sort of things, and then there's more private and intimate places which might suit the European family and that sort of thing. They, they spent a lot of time understanding who their markets were and then designing products within each of their parts that meet their needs. So that's a good lesson for the department, is that we haven't, and I take the point, 
we haven't looked through anybody else's lens apart from our own lens. The one that we inherited through Lands and Survey, Forest Service, those, those, sorts of, those sorts of agencies. And I, you know, I'm the first to put my hand up and say, yes, we did that, and now we've learned from that, and it's about time for us to change. But that change, can't, sorry, I, I was just going to say, that change is not going to happen quickly. Uh, it can't happen quickly because um, I didn't put those three slides up at the beginning for nothing. We made an investment at Plateau Hut of $750,000 and it's going to be there for 50 years. That helps support 1.2% of the population and probably declining who want to go mountaineering. We've made a very big investment in a very small part of the population. That's because we were looking through our traditional lens. So yeah, your point is well made, and that's why I think the Coromandel is so important for us, the Bay of Plenty is so important for us, but so is um, access to places around um, Auckland, in particular, Manukau. Manukau is going to be bigger as a city, it's going to be bigger than Christchurch in the next two or three years.